This man has overseen wars, navigated chaos, and fought against otherworldly monsters. And that's before we even get to his role with Marvel. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Tom Hiddleston performances. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we've gathered the best bits from the rich and varied acting career of Tom Hiddleston, from the glamour of a high rise to the halls of a haunted house. Number 10, Captain James Nichols, War Horse. While newcomer Jeremy Irvine and his character's eponymous horse take center stage for this Steven Spielberg First World War drama, Hiddleston's supporting role offers one of the most memorable moments in the film. Gently, Perkins. I don't want to sour it. There'd be nothing gentle about the war, sir. And there'd be nothing gentle about this one either. I understand that, Sergeant, but I want him fit and shining. He's my horse. Captain Nichols gains Joey the Thoroughbred when the Narrowcott family are impelled to sell him to the army in 1914. And while he vows to look after the horse, his part in the conflict is quickly over. Will you lease him to me, Albert? To be my own mount? I promise you man to man that I'll look after him as closely as you've done. Killed when a cavalry charge falls under machine gun fire, his final seconds are followed by a somber shot of Joey running riderless into German territory. Number 9, Henry V, The Hollow Crown. Starring in three of the four parts of this BBC adaptation of Shakespeare's Henriad, Hiddleston plays English royalty for his role as Henry V. Which God shall guard and put the world's whole strength into one giant arm. It shall not force this lineal honor from me. In Henry IV parts one and two, Prince Hal leads a wayward lifestyle, much to the displeasure of his father, played by Jeremy Irons. I shall hereafter, my thrice gracious lord, be more myself. But by the fourth installment, Henry's journey to kingship is complete, and he cuts an inspirational leader. Hiddleston earned especially high praise for his delivery of some of Shakespeare's most famous speeches, including the rousing St. Crispin's Day Address. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world. Number 8, Hank Williams' I Saw the Light. From Shakespearean kings to country music legends, Hiddleston's portrayal of Hank Williams is a prime example of the actor's range. You love me. Do you love me, Most of the time I do. <laughs> I Saw the Light charts Williams' meteoric rise to fame in the 30s and 40s, focusing especially on his marriage to Audrey and his troubles with alcohol. Okay, well good, because I'm going to go back inside and you you just you keep on playing with that button of yours. Well good, because I love my button. Well then you keep on loving it. <laughs> Hiddleston pulls the whole thing off with style and presence, and a mostly credible southern accent. While some criticism came his way from Williams' grandson Hank Williams III, the actor's role did draw praise, and Tom featured prominently on the movie's soundtrack. Number 7, Captain James Conrad, Kong Skull Island. As one part of an ensemble cast, Hiddleston's outing in this 2017 King Kong reboot helped spark a new era for the franchise. As Captain James Conrad, he travels to an uncharted island somewhere in the Pacific, leading an expedition team into the heart of Kong's homeland. You came here looking for a tracker. Who or what am I tracking? And while he's a veteran of the Vietnam War, there's more to this guy than just guns and fighting. Come on, you bastard! Conrad's a wizened soldier, with a brain prepped for battle. Which is handy, because he soon learns that Kong's not the only monster of this world. This place will change. Word will get out. It always does. Number 6, Edward Archipelago. In one of his earliest film roles, Hiddleston plays a pivotal part in this 2010 exploration of family and identity. With Edward about to travel to Africa for 11 months, his mother and sister organize a holiday to Tresco in the Isles of Sicily to see him off. I don't know what I'm doing anyway. I have no idea what I'm doing. Am I doing the right thing? I have no idea. I'm going away to Africa for 11 months. Why? Who knows? 
but most of the trip is fraught with tension, particularly over the enforced absence of Edward's girlfriend, Chloe. Hiddleston strikes just the right tone as a young man coming of age, but in crisis, for a film filled with heavy silences, difficult conversations, and life-affirming moments. If I can stop one, one person, one 13-year-old, if I can connect with just one person, and, and, and he, and he understands what I'm talking about and, and, and protects himself against, you know, using safe sex, then, then I'll have done my job. Number five, Thomas Sharp, Crimson Peak. Tom goes gothic next for a ghostly, grisly love story straddling both sides of the Atlantic. It's wonderful. It so different. From who? Yeah. Everyone. Hiddleston's Thomas Sharp is an English baronet, holed up with his sister in the family's rundown mansion. He weds Edith, an American writer, brings her to the estate, and all manner of messed up stuff starts happening. Throughout it all, Thomas is a man conflicted between his original, incestuous plot and the emergence of actual emotional attachments. But listen to me. You are a doctor. Anywhere. A stab to the face ought to sort him out. Look away now if you are at all squeamish. <laughs> Number four, Adam, Only Lovers Left Alive. We continue in a darker direction with Only Lovers Left Alive, Jim Jarmusch's original take on the ever popular vampire trend. I once saw Eddie Cochran play one of these. Louis had the front pickup modified to a Gibson P90. Wait, you actually saw Eddie Cocker in play? Hiddleston stars as Adam, a fanged musician who's disillusioned with life, and despite the best efforts of Tilda Swinton's Eve, he's one wooden bullet away from suicide. Don't ever f around like that. Hiddleston tackles the role with mystique and menace in equal measure, flitting between the melancholy artist and misunderstood monster as if it were perfectly natural. He's by no means your typical 21st century vamp, but this genre is a perfect match for Hiddleston's brooding talents. When you separate an entwined particle, and you move both parts away from the other, even at opposite ends of the universe, if you alter or affect one, the other will be identically altered or affected. Spooky. Number three, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Midnight in Paris. While Owen Wilson takes the lead as a nostalgic writer for this Woody Allen homage to the modernist era, Hiddleston brings to life one of the period's most influential figures. Greetings and salutations. You'll forgive me, I've been mixing grain and grappa. As F. Scott Fitzgerald in Midnight in Paris, he leaves Wilson's Gill lost for words, albeit because, in Gill's mind, Fitzgerald died a long time ago. Hiddleston's screen time is limited, but he makes every moment count, tapping into Fitzgerald's skill and style as a wordsmith and socialite. We are all bored. Well, let's do break times. Why don't you uh, tell Cole and Linda to come with and, um, uh, Gil, you coming? And Tom's a perfect fit for 1920s cafe society with trademark good looks and effortless charm. I'm going to find Zelda. I don't like the thought of her with that Spaniard. Number two, Dr. Robert Lang, High Rise. Here, Hiddleston plays a recently moved in resident of a luxury tower block. Yes, I'm afraid I'm not very good at this sort of thing. Slotting in, you mean? Yes, uh, I was rather expecting to find a certain kind of anonymity here. Don't worry, people don't usually care what happens two floors above or below them. Good. But his happy life of gym routines, nightly parties, and naked sunbathing very quickly evaporates as the titular high-rise descends into ruin. Dr. Robert Lang watches anarchy unfold within his closed-off community, struggling to avoid becoming involved himself. I don't know anything about it. I don't know what caused it. And I didn't do it. But a few casual hookups here and a brutal beating there, and he's just as culpable as everyone else. Before long, he's obsessing over paint and tucking into highly questionable meals, all to an awesome alternative ABBA Portishead soundtrack. Needs must, we guess. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Cut, get down! 
No one is questioning your bravery, just your mind. My mind? There's nothing wrong with my mind! Fubar! What do you mean by that? You're the clever one, you work it out. And now, folks, the great escape ball! <laughs> Number 1, Loki, Marvel Cinematic Universe. This guy is probably the best loved body in the entire MCU. I am Loki of Asgard, and I am burdened with glorious purpose. As Loki, Hiddleston brings out all the worst parts of human behavior for a role which sees him routinely double cross his family and relentlessly pursue power. A constant thorn in Thor's side, he's also one of the Avengers' most dangerous enemies and he's notoriously difficult to pin down, regardless of whichever high security cell he's kept in. I won't touch Barton, not until I make him kill you. Slowly, intimately, in every way he knows you fear. And then he'll wake just long enough to see his good work. And when he screams, I'll split his skull. This is my bargain, you mewling quim. From iconic headwear to evil one-liners, made even more badass by Hiddleston's expert accent, He's a standout supervillain and one of Marvel's mightiest characters. Why have you done this? To prove to Father that I am a worthy son. When he wakes, I will have saved his life. I will have destroyed that race of monsters, and I will be true heir to the throne. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.